Here we got a 40 inch Samsung UN series with image on the screen, but no backlight. So we just have a makeshift LED tester over there. There's a buck boost board bringing our 12 volt AC adapter up to about 35 volts. So since these are all in series, need fairly high voltage. So we're just going right to the plug here. So on this strip, we have one shorted LED here. This strip doesn't light up at all, so one of these are open. And over here we have one, two, three, four, five LEDs shorted. Kill it. Here I have the center strip out of the Samsung. This is a strip that one of the LEDs are open, which is keeping the entire backlights from turning on. The shorted LEDs will still allow it to complete a circuit and turn on. So I've already gone through and did some, let's see here, I should be able to scratch through and get, there we go. So I've already gone through and checked each one, marked them with a little smiley face there. So we know, come on, there we go. I have to scratch through the coating. This doesn't have test points on it. So you just have to scratch through the uh, solder mask. Um, I have my power supply set to three volts and then uh, limited to 100 milliamps. And I'm just testing one LED at a time. All right, so I've marked the two bad LEDs. Um, now this LED here is drawing no current, so this is the open one. And the LED on this side, I've already popped the lens off of this one. Um, let's see if I, there we go. Now this one, uh, the power supply goes, uh, it, it's showing a short, it's pulling the full current and going to zero volts. So this LED is shorted and this LED is open so theoretically I should be able to short this LED out and the, the backlights will come on at least the working LEDs will light up I'm gonna try that now well I have the TV plugged in so and also have my current meter set to milliamps so theoretically I should be able to use the meter to close the circuit here in this open LED and get light and there we have it. And we are drawing 432 milliamps, which is pretty high. Um, I'll have to use my highest current rating LEDs to replace these. Maybe with having so many failed LEDs, could be affecting making the current go up if it's not a well put together power supply. Should be able to regulate the current, but we have many failed LEDs, so we'll just have to see. To remove the defective LED, I found the easiest way to do it is just pop off the lens with a flathead screwdriver, and then to remove the bad LED, I just take and chip away at it with my side cutters and just kind of get down to the metal base die of the LED, and then use your Highest wattage, biggest tip soldering iron that you have. I'm just going to use my solder sucker to heat that up. To just kind of hit it with some heat and wipe it away. I'm just going to put a glob of solder on it to kind of help it reflow. Just 
Now since the back of this strip is aluminum, it's basically a heat sink. It takes a little bit of heat and some time to get that LED to come up. There. Well, there we go. All right, old LED's gone. I'll just wipe away the junk left behind. And now it's ready, ready for a new LED, some fresh solder, and uh, new LED is ready to go. I'm using 350 milliamp, uh, 3030 TV LEDs. Um, these can be found on eBay. I think uh, the 100 pack was $10 or something like that. They're not very expensive when you buy them in bulk. I'm going to be using my hot air station. I put down some fresh solder and a little dab of the uh, flux on there just to help it flow along. I'm going to be bottom heating this as usual. Uh, you kind of don't want to hit the top of the LED itself with too much heat, but if you hit it from the bottom, it melts the solder nicely without blasting the top of the LED with heat. Just want to make sure it's squared up, flat and even. I'm going to let that cool off for a second, clean it up with some rubbing alcohol, test it, and then glue the lens back on. So I'm going to use my same 3 volt power supply uh, just to double check the polarity's right, make sure it works, make sure it's not shorted so we're good. So I can go ahead and clean this up glue the lens on and move on to the next. Now I just have to do this about, what, eight more times to fix all the defective LEDs. So just repeat the process to each strip as needed. I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, super glue, super glue to put these lenses back on. So I've repaired all but one LED. I left one LED off to check the current. I'm curious if the current's going to change now that it doesn't have a whole bunch of bad LEDs. Uh, I'm still at 430 milliamps, which is driving my 350 milliamp LEDs a little bit too hard. It does look nice and evenly lit. Everything does look good, so I think I'm just going to have to roll with these, but I'm definitely going to be turning down the brightness. This is going to be my bedroom TV anyway, so I'm going to have the dimmer turning the brightness all the way down to minimum. Now with all the defective LEDs pulled out, I'm just letting it burn in for a bit, at, even at the 430 milliamps. So if there's going to be any failures, it will show up now. Also gives, gives us some time for that super glue to dry. Just as I suspected, is the uh, when I turned it on, the backlight was cranked all the way up to 20. So I'm going to turn it down to a little bit more reasonable uh, amount. But uh, hey, it uh, cleaned up pretty good for a dumpster TV, so I'm happy. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.